in today's video we are going to discuss about the flux meters we will be discussing about the introduction we will be discussing the structure and the working of flux meters and also we will be seeing the advantages disadvantages applications and we will be seeing the important questions also okay so flux meters are used to measure the flux of a permanent magnet so in order to measure the flux surrounded with a permanent magnet we use a meter called flux meter Okay, so this flux meter is actually an advanced form of the ballistic galvanometer. We have not yet discussed about the ballistic galvanometer, but we will be discussing about that very soon. Okay, so this flux meter, just know that it is an advanced version of a ballistic galvanometer. And the most important advantages of having a flux meter is that they require only very low controlling torque and they have heavy electromagnetic damping. Okay, so these are the two important advantages of a flux meter. Now, about the structure, the structure of a flux meter, it is consisting of a coil which is freely suspended between the poles of a magnet. Okay, you can see that this is the coil. These are the coils, the rectangular ones and they are placed or this coil moves freely between the poles. This is the poles, the north pole and the south pole of a permanent magnet. And this coil is suspended freely with the help of a spring. You can see that it is suspended with the help of a spring. And the single suspension thread. Okay. So this is a single silk suspension thread. Okay. So there is a silk suspension thread and there is a spring. With the help of that spring and silk suspension thread, this coil we are freely suspending or it is moving freely in between the poles of the magnet. So that is the arrangement, very simple arrangement of a flux meter. There is a spring and there is a silk thread to which the coils are connected and this coil will move freely in between the poles of the permanent magnet. Okay. So that is the structure and also you can see that there are certain loose helices and the current enters to this coil. So the, there should be some current in this coil, right? So the current enters to the coil through this loose helices, okay? And this current will reduce the controlling torque to the minimum value, okay? So we require the controlling torque of a measuring instrument to be minimum right so the controlling torque is reduced to a minimum value with the help of this current the current is entering through this helices you can see that there is a red colored loose helices connected and through this heli helical structures the current is entering and this current reduces the controlling torque to the minimum value okay so this is the very simple arrangement of a flux meter and now let us see how the flux meter is working and we are and how we are able to measure the flux associated with a permanent magnet. Next, let us see the operation of a flux meter. Okay, so flux meters are used for measuring the flux linkage associated with a permanent magnet, right? So, in order to uh, find the flux linkage associated with a magnet or some coil, we are going to connect the flux meter along with a coil which is called the search coil okay so this coil is a search coil along with this search coil the terminals of the flux meter is connected okay so the terminals of flux meter are connected across the search coil as shown in this figure the flux linkage in this coil is varied by either removing it from the magnetic field or by reversing the field of the magnet okay so this coil is placed inside a magnetic field okay so we are going to first change the magnetic field associated with it or we are going to reverse the magnetic field and we are going to make some flux changes okay that is we are going to make some flux linkage changes with this coil so that we are going to find or we are going to see whether it is detected by the flux meter or not for that purpose we are going to change the flux or we are going to vary the flux associated with this coil which is the search coil okay 
Now the change in flux, whenever there is a change in flux in this coil, an EMF or an electromotive force will be induced in this coil. Consider that the EMF induced is EC. So there is some EMF induced in this coil and this EMF will generate a current. And this current will be passing through the surge coil and also the current is being allowed to pass through this flux meter also. Okay, so since they are connected together, when there is a current passing through the coil, the current will also pass through this flux meter also. So when the current is passing through the flux meter, what will happen? The pointer of the flux meter will deflect. And this deflection of the pointer of the flux meter is directly proportional to the change in the flux linkages. Okay. So due to the change in flux linkages, the EMF is induced and due to which a current is flowing. So the current, so due to the flux linkage changes with this coil, that is whenever the flux linked with this coil is changed and EMF is induced due to which a current is flowing and this current flowing or the current is the reason for the pointer's deflection and the pointer's deflection will be directly proportional to the flux linkage. Okay. So that is a very simple working of a flux meter. And when the flux linkage or its variations, that is whenever the variation of the flux associated with this coil is reduced, what will happen? So when the flux uh, linkage associated with the coil is reduced, the pointer's deflection will also reduced and the current will also be reduced, right? As we have discussed in the beginning that it is having high electromagnetic uh, damping. So due to this high electromagnetic damping, when the flux linkage is reduced, the coil will stop movement and the pointer will stop its deflection. Okay. So this is the operation of a flux meter. Now moving on to the advantages. Next let us see the important advantages, disadvantages and applications of flux meter. First advantage is that they are portable and Next one, they are calibrated directly in Weber meter so that we can directly uh, take the reading. We don't have to convert to some other unit or anything. Third one, the deflection of the coil is free from the time taken by the flux to change. This however, time the flux is taking to uh, change its direction or its linkage value, the coil will only consider the flux change, doesn't uh, take into account the time taken, okay. The disadvantage is that they are less sensitive. Some, sometimes it can be inaccurate also. Okay. Then the applications are they are used for measuring the magnetic field. Then they are used for plotting of hysteresis loop. That is hysteresis loop tracers. Then they can be used in voltage integration circuits and for ferromagnetic detectors. They are the main applications of flux meters. Next, we are going to see some important questions connected with the flux meter. Okay. So, next we are going to see the questions from uh, flux meters. You will be seeing the questions on board. Okay. So, the first question is, the BH characteristics can be determined using dash. A, a meter. B, flux meter. C, volt meter. D, multimeter. The correct answer is the BH characteristics or BH curve. B stands for? the flux density magnetic flux density flux density and h starts for magnetic field strength okay field strength and the cara we draw in between b and h is called bh curve or bh cara so in order to draw the bh cara we make use of flux meter. So the correct answer is option B, flux meter. Next question. The BH curve can be used to determine dash. A, iron loss. B, hysteresis loss. C, voltage loss. D, eddy current loss. Okay. So the BH curve can be used to Determine the hysteresis loss. Okay. So, BH curve can be used to determine the hysteresis loss which is option B. So, there is a hysteresis trace. So, we will be discussing uh, later or in upcoming videos how to draw the hysteresis loop or hysteresis loss curve all those things. Okay. So, we can make use of BH curve to find the hysteresis loss. Correct answer is option B.
third question when using a flux meter if the flux changes from phi to minus phi what happens to the current a become zero b become infinity c remains the same d reverses that is when the flux is changed from phi to minus phi the current will actually reverse okay so the correct answer is option d the current will reverse next question PMMC instruments can be used as flux meters by dash. A. Using a low resistance shunt. B. Removing the control spring. C. Making the control spring having large moment of inertia. D. Using the high resistance in series. Okay. So, if we actually remove the control spring, we can make PMMC instruments it can be used as flux meters. Okay. So, the PMMC can be converted to flux meters if we remove the control spring. So, the correct answer is option B. That is by removing of control spring, we can convert PMMC. That is permanent magnet moving coil instruments to flux meters. Okay. Next question. BH curve shows a relation between dash. A, we have already uh, seen the answer. Anyway, let's see the options. A, magnetic field strength and magnetic flux. B, magnetic field strength and magnetic flux density. C, current and magnetic flux density. D, voltage and magnetic flux density. So, the BH curve is the relation between magnetic field strength and magnetic flux density. B stands for flux density and H stands for magnetic field strength. So, correct answer is option B. Okay, so these are the some important questions which I have included from this topic. So, if you found the video useful, please do give it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.